Hello everyone, GM, GM. Welcome to the Change Log. I'm Nick Frostbutter from the Solana Foundation, and today I've got Jonas with me. How you doing, Jonas? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Just came back from Ukraine, and now we have like a nice, exciting Change Log here. Oh yeah, Ukraine Blockchain Week, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really cool. It was, uh, uh, the cool. Comica team was there, the Encrypted Conference. Um, yeah, very nice city. Very nice, uh, talented devs. Awesome. Love to see it. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive into the change log. I see you got uh, SIMD148 already loaded up for us. Do you want to talk about it? Yes, so this is some changes on how you can uh, move stake and move Lamperts between different staking accounts. This is especially interesting for um, stake pool providers so they can easily like, get a bunch of stake delegated and they can take parts of it to different validators. And yeah, this is um, a few changes here. So for example, it helps a little bit that no excess Lamperts get um, stuck in delegated stake accounts because now it's um, changing it so that it's like basically easier and more fluent. Um, the only um, thing that was uh, thought in the past about this, I think, was that there might be some problems if we get slashing in the future. But um, in the meantime, this will make it way easier to like move stake around and you don't need to like uh, unstake it and stake it again. So yeah, that's a really nice change. Yeah, yeah, that'll be nice. There'll probably be some discussions there later. And then did you see some nice commits? Yeah, I saw quite a few in there. There was there was this one here, which is uh, uh, super important to point out to people. Now that version 2.0 of the Agave runtime, the Agave validator has been, the version has been cut. There's this PR that is actually going to start removing some of those deprecated RPC endpoints. Many of these RPC endpoints have been deprecated in favor of newer, more better uh, RPC endpoints. And that code, now that we're doing, you know, Semver version 2.0, start removing a lot of that deprecated code. And uh, so take a look at all of these RPC endpoints that are going to be removed, including uh, also from Web3.js. They're also going to be removed out of there soon. So the deprecation warning has been in there for, for quite a while on both of these. So, you know, make sure exactly. your code's not using these. Yeah, since uh, many people, of course, ignore deprecation warnings. I know that like uh, I Visual Studio I'm Code is <laughs> like cutting them through, but have a deep look at these. Like probably you still might use confirm transaction or get recent block hash or so on. So you might need to update these actually in the future. So yeah, just if you run into any errors there, this is the reason. Then the next one we have here, uh, update all crates to V2 only version. So you might have seen there was a, a version upgrade to um, 2.0, but uh, I think it broke a few things, right, Nick? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So this is related to um, to this PR here, um, which broke some dependencies because many of the packages actually have like the smaller or equal 2.0. And yeah, this broke in the last days um, a bunch of dependencies. Uh, but this is now already fixed. So yeah, John Schinko went in and fixed it as quickly as possible. So it's very nice to see. Some versions have been yanked. So should be all fine again now, I think, hopefully. And then this one is interesting. Um, what is it about? Yeah, so there's, uh, for those of you who don't know, there's within the compute budget section of the runtime, you can set your priority fee. People are pretty familiar with the priority fee. There's also functionality to adjust the, uh, how many, the, the specific data that you're, the size of the data that you're loading within the accounts. So when you, when a validator goes to process transactions, it needs all the accounts in order to, you know, process them. But there's a maximum limit there. And no one really uses this up until now because there's not really a huge uh, benefit or detriment to use it and adjust the loaded account size. But now there is, uh, there's a feature gate that is open and it's going to basically make it so the amount of, data that you're requesting, account data size that you're requesting, will actually affect your total compute usage within your transaction. So be sure to be watching out for that. And if you are requesting lots and lots of account sizes or a very large account size, then you might uh, start to notice things in the future once this feature gate gets activated. Yeah, yeah. Before you could like just load like a bunch of 64 megabyte accounts. And I think you didn't really get paid for it. And I think they yep. split it actually into two feature gates. So this is, I think, what this is about. So in the future, there might be some additional costs here to keep in mind. Yep, absolutely. And then who have you heard of actions? I think it's like all over the place. I haven't heard of them at all. Yeah. Oh, this, on this Twitter, thing. Tell I me saw about it. And, yes, <laughs> definitely. And we collected like a few resources here that you can check out in the comments later. So here's, for example, a guide and a documentation on solana.com. 
Then we also have a video walkthrough um, where you just learn about it in 17 minutes. And then we also have like a bunch of examples here. And we're going to put all these links here. And basically what it is, is you can put a link anywhere on the internet and it can trigger a Solana transaction. At the moment, I think it's only on X, right? Nick, do you want to give us a quick walkthrough? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the gist of it. Um, so like you can basically the idea of blinks and actions is, is bringing transactions to the users where they're already at. So in theory, it can be anywhere on the internet. Right now, it is just limited to x.com, your, your Twitter feeds, your DMs on Twitter. It, fun fact, it does work in DMs, which is really cool. Oh, cool. And, I didn't know it. Yeah. So the idea is like you can people can share a link that, you know, follows the action specification and that will basically render uh, some special user interface directly in the Twitter feed and eventually on other platforms as well, where you can immediately interact with that that link. You can create a Solana transaction, you can send it to the blockchain. So you could think of like sharing a link for a token swap, you know, digital collectibles, donations for charity, uh, voting on DAO votes, like all sorts of different powerful things directly to where people are. And uh, yeah, Blinks are, are incredibly powerful. We're really excited to, uh, you know, push this, help push this forward within the ecosystem and uh, see what all the amazing things that people build. And uh, shout out for this last link here for the awesome repo, awesome Blinks. If anyone is building anything that is Blinks or action related, uh, open a PR to this awesome Blinks repo. We're going to start doing some of these within the Solana ecosystem, the awesome repos, just to help collect a lot of the amazing things that our community is building. And there's already some really great stuff on here from Dialect and the heavy duty builders. They built this like Rust CLI helper tool for creating links and or creating Blinks. You got Dreader, Truffle, Tensor, Realms is on there, you know, uh, Helium hip votes. A lot of great stuff. Um, so if you're building anything with actions and blinks, open a PR. I love this idea of these awesome repositories, actually. And there's so many developers out there which oh, are yeah. way better than us. And they can now like oh, absolutely. just collect it all here. And we are just like supporting it a little bit. This is like really, really cool. Another thing that you can build with blinks, by the way, is uh, games, of course. Yes, you can. And, and when you hear this, the game gem will actually be in full force already. And there will be a track for blinks as well, probably. So you can try to make a game with Blinks. Um, shout out to Spaceman Dev, by the way, who did like a live stream yesterday building the first game. Hopefully by now nice. it will be open source already. Um, yeah, building in public is always amazing. And we have like in real life game gems in Istanbul in Turkey, in Munich in Germany, in Berlin in Germany, in New York. And yeah, and in UK, of course, um, that's the biggest one. Directly it will end on the last day, on the first day of the hackathon, actually. And then going into this very game-themed hackathon, uh, hacker house in London. So um, if you haven't yet, book your flights. It's going to start in three <laughs> days, I think, when the video comes out. So there's not too much time left. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great game jam, I think. Yeah, the game jams always, always have really great things that get put out for them. Exactly. Last but not least here is Stack Exchange, obviously. Uh, shout out to Stack Exchange and everyone who is doing amazing work over there. We got Jimmy leading the, leading the charge again. Ari, Joey, Chalda, got uh, that Jonas guy's on there again. He's he's all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, good work on everyone on, on Stack Exchange, answering all these F questions, all these devs. Everyone is here. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, helping the developers here. That's really great. Yeah, and that's going to wrap it up for this week on the Change Log, and we'll catch you next time. See you next week. Bye-bye.